Deep with Saladin Ellis, where we step beyond shadows and surface level perceptions to discuss and understand the deeper narrative shaping our realities. We dive into current affairs, culture, and politics, seeing the story under the story. Now we have here uh, Ben Shapiro calls Biden an agent of Hamas and Nancy Pelosi flip flops. I mean, it's nothing unusual about that. Uh, on conditioning to Israeli aid. So let's just, out of the gate, let's start this. News of the day. All right, well, former Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and 30 House Democrats sent a letter to Joe Biden and Secretary of State Antony Blinken urging them to reconsider the recent authorization of weapons sent to Israel days after seven World Central Kitchen food aid workers, of course, were killed by an Israeli airstrike in Gaza. Now, this move provoked surprise and some plaudits from pro-Palestine advocates, but now she appears to be walking it back. In an interview on MSNBC just this morning, Pelosi clarified that, quote, I am not a fan of having conditions on aid to Israel. Do you think that conditions on aid play? Well, mm -hmm. If they are put in place, do you, what, what would they be? Well, I'd, I've not been a, a fan of having. I haven't been a fan of putting aid or putting conditioning on Israeli aid. Why would you not? If you're Democrat or Republican, why would you be against having conditions on any type of death machines? Where that's what these things, this is military aid. These are death machines, fighter jets, bullets. Beans, bullets, and band-aids, which you need to win wars. I mean, conditions on aid to Israel. We, we give Israel the aid we give them because it's in our national security issued interest to do right. so. And that has been uh, our tradition. Now contrast this with the letter she signed in which lawmakers wrote, in light of this incident, we strongly urge you to reconsider your recent decision to authorize the transfer of a new arms package to Israel and to withhold this and any future offensive arms transfers until a full investigation into the airstrike is completed. We also urge you to withhold these transfers if Israel fails to harm to innocent civilians in Gaza. That was that was relatable, right? This is where this is why I created uh, from the cave. Like that was common sense, middle ground. Hey. They might be doing some stuff we don't understand. Like, we love them overall. We, we're, that's my brother. That's my sister. But you might be taking the money I'm giving you, the weapons I'm giving you, the aid. And somebody within your your organization is u utilizing these materials wrong. Or they're not utilizing them properly. Maybe they need more training. Maybe the military needs more training. The intelligence, uh, uh, the, the 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 targeting people needs more training. So maybe it's not. Let's say it's not. But to just not to not be able to hold Israel Israel accountable and still just here you go, here you go, here you go. I don't like what you're doing, but hey, I'm gonna give you this money. I'm gonna give you this money and his weapons. But this time, can you please just consider what I what what I'm talking to you about? No sane person would do that. We would just stop. Yo, okay, no, I'm not giving you this money. I'm not giving you these bullets. Last time I gave you these bullets, you wouldn't shot up a car in the neighborhood. I'm not giving you these bullets no more. Or if I do give it to you, I need to know what you're going to do with them, uh, what range you're going to, how many targets you're going to shoot, where it's at. I need to be able to check up on you. I need to just send me a video of you at the range, whatever it is. But to just say, like, to have to publicly say, like, hey, 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 I want all the powers to be to know out there, hey, don't cancel me. I, I don't. I, I I don't I don't want to watch them. I know they should be able to do what they want. They're grown. Well, if they're like your parents tell you, if you're grown, then take care of your damn self. Pay your own bills, including aid workers. And if it fails to facilitate or arbitrarily denies or restricts the transport and delivery of humanitarian aid into Gaza. Mm. And Nancy Pelosi isn't the only one to be walking back some Israel critical statements. Just a day after Elizabeth Warren was reported to have broken ranks and used the word genocide to describe the conflict in Gaza, she too is qualifying her remarks. Now, yesterday, she told an audience at the Islamic Center of... These are human lives. She broke rank. That implies that they said, hey, we know, we know what is happening, but we can't let them know. This is not a game. 
is Democrat and Republican turned into Bloods and Crips? I mean, they've always been that way. But this is like having trouble in our own house of America, whether it's racism or politics, it's sort of normal, right? But for us to help another house burn down, it's even crazier. Boston and Wayland, Massachusetts, that quote, if you want to do, if you want to do what you want, what you want to do is an application of law, I believe they'll find that is genocide and they, they have ample evidence to do so in reference to the ICJ. Only is hold a political at the Okay. Just thing quickly. It was people uh, pro Palestine protesters were you know activists were pleasantly surprised, but voted on a funding bill for Israel. So if you believe that this is in fact in general, just behaved in that way. Because somebody gave her what she needed to do that. You wash my back, I wash your back. Or maybe they're taking part of the funds. Maybe they got the right stocks. Maybe they got the right military uh, industrial complex to do it and that she's going to make a profit off of it. This is why we need term limits. There shouldn't be somebody in there that's beholden to an organization or to a company to or to a, a country to where they're so wrapped up and so personally involved that they're like, ah, oh, I know him and I know them and I really don't want to do this and go against them. If they had term limits, then there's somebody in there every three years, four years, two years, whatever it is, then I, I don't know him. I'm doing the best for America. I, I don't know him. Man. I ain't got no personal connection. I come here. I'm a regular American, but they're, they're not. Some of these senators and politicians, the only job, the only career that they've ever had is being a, con uh, a politician and the founding fathers, just as much as they probably never thought someone like my skin color could run for president. They didn't think that these pol that it will become a job and a career. Like that wasn't even a thing. Now it seems like maybe she was just uh, opining as a legal matter um, and not really articulating her own beliefs. But if you believe legally that the ICJ, the International Criminal Court, is likely to find genocide and that there's ample evidence for them to find genocide, why wouldn't that inform your own belief as to whether or not it's genocide? Sure. Now, the Nancy Pelosi uh, interview on MSNBC I thought was very interesting. She seemed to me to be choosing her words extraordinarily carefully. She was very hesitant. She was very careful. She was cautious in trying to say that it, it was almost like like someone had a gun to her, her head, frankly, who wasn't going to like if she said anything hostile, real. But she did, you know, saying that she doesn't like conditioning aid because supporting Israel is in the U.S. best interests, um, but they're not happy, sort of, with everything that's going on. That was terrible. And then, you know, gently reminding everyone that we can't actually fund a country if it's not allowing, according to our own law, right. if they're not allowing in humanitarian aid. Again, all, all this. So I disagree with Pelosi on the funding question. What she's trying to do, okay, so now that you said that, it's almost like what she's trying to do is like pretend that she doesn't agree with it, right? It's almost like she doesn't want to go against the her regime, her regime that she's in, her gang, so instead of saying, hey, I don't think we should be doing this because of moral and ethical dilemmas and uh, legalities and just basic human decency, she's saying, um, listen, I think I, I agree with everything you say. You should be able to do whatever you want, and you should be able to just wipe the map with them. Hey, if it was on me, I would. But the ICJ, you know, the international courts, they say, I don't agree with them. But, you know, we got to do it because we know just let's just do it. You know what I mean? Let's just let's just let some aid in. Let's just, you know, what I mean, not kill everybody. You know, just just for shits and giggles. Right. Uh. Anyway, for me, that's independent, frankly, of what Israel is doing, because I just don't think it's I don't think it's a foreign policy uh, interest to be paying for other countries. Vences, I don't think it's in our actually financial or domestic best interest. We have a. Uh, a country with a lot of problems. I don't know why uh, why an indebted country is being asked to pay for a, a country that has a much smaller debt ratio. But well, anyway, but what's what's fascinating? What he said was, "Yo, their credit score is better than ours. We're in debt to China. We're paying more on the interest a year that 
we owe for China, on the money we owe to China, we're paying more in interest a year than we pay for the military. So if you think we spend too much on the United States military, then go look at how much we're paying on the interest that we owe China, not the principal. You know, the people out there in the upside down car loan, your car worth $15,000 uh, or is worth $15,000, but you bought it for $25,000 and now you're paying and the interest is 23%. So now the monthly payments are only $300, but 250 of that is going to the interest and only $50 is going to the actual paying down the car loan. You're going to be in that forever. The United States government is living and acting like a United States citizen. And that is the, and that is the problem. The thing about it is that it, she very much is centering her choice to sign that letter in the Andre, uh, Jose Andres attack of aid workers that happened uh, last Monday. So it, it, she seemed to want to really carve that out. Like what I'm really saying, well, the real reason I offer that support is that I objected to that specific incident, which really tracks with reporting that said that that really shook up Washington because Jose Andres is a real DC phenomenon. He was known to bring like good food and respectable cuisine back to the district. He's very much a DC insider. Everyone wants a reservation at a Jose Andres restaurant. And the that that felt personal to people yeah. in Washington. And you're trying in a to way say that... nice things about him right now, although that sounds kind no, of. No, I'm not trying to say nice things. Inside. I'm trying to say real things. They have this thing like their buddy buddy in Washington. It's just it's, it's sick. About the relationship between the people who are making these policy yeah. decisions and the person who was so personally now implicated by this attack. Hit, right? Exactly. So what? Well, you didn't see these politicians uh, attending um, vigils for. Most of Congress um, attending uh, any kind of vigils for the now uh, estimated as many old in, in, in Gaza, you are seeing a six foreign national were killed uh, with part, as part of this team. Now, at the same time, you see here it gives up a little bit of cover by saying, well, America already has laws that restrict our ability to give aid to a nation that's not respecting our humanitarian values. It's the Leahy law. Like, so I'm not even saying anything new here, but that raises the question, why is it that that law has not been applied to Israel in this instance or any new number of other instances that have existed as this? Yeah. About this. Now a little bit on this. Now that you're getting a little bit of movement from the Nancy Pelosi's of the world, you're getting a little bit more of pushback. The, the phone, the famous phone call now, the famous phone call between Joe Biden and um, uh, Netanyahu. It's very, it's very interesting to see now the Biden administration of all people being accused of basically being Hamas. And I just wanted to read that the, uh, Ben Shapiro had a tweet. He said that. This is where I'm really, I, I really turned this on for. I haven't seen it yet, but for Ben Shapiro to call Biden the agent of Hamas when he's been letting, like the gall, like the balls on Ben Shapiro to be in America, and for us to just be, or for them, the American government just be turning a blind eye to this the Biden administration, and for him to still have the galls, the cojones to come out and say, "Well, Biden is an agent of Hamas," like. The Biden administration is now effectively preparing to make aid to Israel contingent on dot, 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 unspecified changes to Israeli policy, which means that Israel can do little or nothing to appease the White House. Hamas is now in control of the Biden administration. The fact that we're asking Israel to, yo, maybe you should target a little better. Like, I don't know if people realize that there's video footage of the drone strike against the human, like, so, uh, some of the, the people in Gaza. Like, you can look up this footage of Jim just civilians that are walking, just living their life like you would be at the park and just la la la, picking your kids up from school and they just getting hit. <laughs> you don't even hear it. They don't. They didn't even know it was coming. They've been hit multiple times. You've seen workers on the ground and people just crawling for their lives that they got hit from the first drone and then another one. Bah! You, I mean, the intelligence and, and, the, and the targeting was messed up on two strikes and y'all continue? Who's authorizing this? How, how far up the chain of command do we got to go to get permission to strike? Or is it just free for all? You see him, shoot him. You got him, smoke him.
To me, that seems reflective of the kind of maximalist and rather absurd arguments that have been made for people who throughout the last six months have been asking for very limited restrictions on U.S. aid or just the application, again, of the laws that we already have on the books. And the fact that now that there is a little bit of movement in the Biden administration, it's resulted in a withdrawal um, from southern Gaza uh, by from by the IDF, et cetera. It does really seem to show that the activists in this instance were very much right in this kind of rhetoric. Your Hamas, if you do the bare minimum, has really fallen on deaf ears. You're, you're an agent of Hamas if you ask for Israel to control themselves and try not to kill civilians. And you're anti-Semitic if you ask, hey, Israel, we get it. You know, around 1,200 people died in October, October 7th. Uh, yeah, but over 40,000 of them about have died. You think it's about even? No, no, it's not about that. It's not about that. You're anti-Semite. What, you're questioning us? What, what you mean? We can't just kill them? You want to ask us how many people we killed today? That's, that's anti-Semitic. What do you mean, how many civilians did we kill today? You're an agent of Hamas? Yeah, I mean, that's coming from someone who I don't, frankly, I even don't even think speaks for a, a monolith on the right yeah. in terms of there being unlimited support and funding for Israel. Um, actually, Ben Shapiro's takes on this, I think, are increasingly coming under fire, including because of the dispute with Candace Owens, who, whatever you think of her, um, her views being very different on Israel. I mean, and, and, and there are other people at The Daily Wire who do also have departing uh, differences of opinion on this subject from Ben Shapiro, including Matt Walsh, who's, I think, arguably their most famous person at this point. Um, you know, Ben represents, I think, an older, kind of more neoconservative, hawkish consensus on Israel. Although, even that said, we've talked about other examples of past Republican presidents who were you know, who were, I guess, in some ways part of that consensus or even part of the Cold War consensus, who were keen to reign in Israel when it went too far because we thought it was going to invite blowback for our own country. And it is interesting that Biden has been far or felt until now, yes, far less yes. likely to and, engage in that. Yes. And I and, and that you start to wonder if it's that if that's ideological, is that a personality thing? Does that have to do with how old and out of touch he seems to so many Americans, including a majority of Americans in his own party. They run a you know, Democratic Party. Just check this out. Imagine if Biden came up and did an address, like an impromptu, doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. the President of the United States is making an address and he say, we're sorry to the American public. We have stood behind Israel because they're usually in the in the in the right morally and ethically we see Israel as one of our most important strategic allies and also something that's dear to our heart but the current administration that is currently in charge of overseeing Israel's defense and military operations have led them astray. We will always be here for Israel. Israel is like the long lost child who's ran away, but you tell them that the door is always open for you. But we cannot sit by as a country who's been in multiple wars, have seen some of the most egregious offenses to mankind by members of mankind, this can no longer happen. Or at the very least, we can no longer be privy and a party to this. Biden might win the election. For the American people to see our leaders say, yo, we messed up. Or, or not we messed up, but our policy that we were ironclad on is not ironclad. Why would it be ironclad? Why would you take up for another country so much that if they assassinated somebody, we had to go, oh, yeah, that was really bad. We're going to talk to them about it. Hey, I asked Netanyahu not to assassinate nobody no more. Um, and he sounded like he was really going to do to it. So I have positive hopes. Why are we asking? We should be telling Israel what to do. 
and that goes to central quintessential fitness to do the job. I do think it's interesting that Biden has acquiesced more to Israel than other presidents and has get, is still getting accused of being Hamas or having his administration being run by a Hamas. All right, stick around. We've got a lot more rising coming up next for you. Wow, thank you, Rising Weekdays on Roku, Vizio, Plex, for Vive, YouTube. Listen, uh, wow. I think Biden's scared. And it's election. The good thing is that because it's election season, he don't want to meet Trump face to face uh, and this still be going on. So I think it's going to force him. It is going to force them. And I think it's going to blow back on Netanyahu. Netanyahu is a dangerous man. People talk about Putin, but he knows if this war stops, he's going to have to answer for things. Like once the news cycle's over and the war stop, can you imagine that? Uh, after a, a month and weeks and everything's gone and they see a battle damage assessment, he's going to have to answer for certain things. It's certain members of his party and his cabinet going to say, yo, you got to, yeah, we had a wild time, but you're going to have to hold this one, my God. You're going to have to do this. Um, we have an immigration problem in America. We have a problem where we're asking for simple things and they just find the money to give it to foreign nations like that they find the money to supply somebody for military aid like that we're giving them money so that they could purchase military aid from us also and then we're giving them military aid they're taking the money they're taking pieces of this pie And we're just sitting by watching it like we can't do nothing. The government in this this country was built by average folks. Don't let these politicians make you believe that they're writing their own speeches and they're going in there and debating and looking at. They have interns and, and, and people that work for them that go and look at these things and go say, oh, look, this is this is the summary. And they say, oh, I agree with this and I don't agree with that. And I don't know. They're not writing these bills themselves and these laws. And, and they're not. They're just talking puppets. Nancy Pelosi is a talking puppet. Biden is a talking puppet. He's a head. He's a figurehead like the royal family in England. Like it's just perplexing at this point that almost th anywhere between thirty and forty thousand kids mostly are dead under the age of eighteen. Or under the age of twenty one, really. This can't keep going. It's a shame. Even if it stopped right now, it it is still a travesty. It, this is this is tragic, and we're not stopping. And we're pretending like we have no power. We, the U.S. could stop this tomorrow, and if Israel keeps going, I'm not sure the U.S. could stop uh, Iran from just giving them a little pop house. Yo, what y'all doing? And then we will have no justification for going to war, responding to Iran. The international community gonna be like, yo, what y'all thought? What y'all thought it was? It's up and it's stuck. And and and, the, and the, the gall of Ben Shapiro, and he's just getting you know he's had this whole thing with Candace Owens and the Daily Wire, and and firing her, and he's he's really claiming now that he has nothing to do with it, and he doesn't make those decisions hiring and firing at the Daily Wire, but that wasn't the case before. Listen, uh, there's been another one from uh, from the cave and discussing the things going on in the cave, man. It's wild in there. But luckily, me, you, and the others were out of the cave, and we go back in sometimes just to see our family, friends, and, and and just to play the game sometimes. But that's all I got for you today, man. Let me know. Drop a like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think about this Biden stuff. Do you think Trump will, will change it? I, I cannot see Trump asking Netanyahu not to not do something, and him him. Him responding with anything other than I'm on that. Because if you truly think Trump is a narcissist, then you know that uh, a grandiose narcissist at that, then you know that he couldn't take rejection. You said what? I asked you for what? But when you got an old man, a uh, grandpa as president, that's what you get. Uh, let me know. Like, share, subscribe. See you next one.